Well, the old bottle of cherry got me. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> A number of years ago, my family and I lived in Michigan, in a little town called Lapeer, about 60 some miles north of Detroit. It was Christmas time, about four weeks before Christmas. They did a church school there, and the children were all happy because they were all happy at Christmas party. And so they did, they were discussing one day who would do this and who would do that and who would do that. And it came to the Christmas tree. <coughs> who, would like, who would get the Christmas tree? Who would get the Christmas tree? That was a problem. And finally, the little girl said, My daddy, okay, he, he likes the Christmas tree. And so I was volunteered to get the Christmas tree. <laughs> it was for about four weeks, four weeks before Christmas. So I thought, well, I have lots of time. No hurry here. About one week before Christmas, my wife said, when are you going to get the Christmas tree? I said, well, there's no hurry. We got three or four more days. <laughs> and so, on Monday morning, as I left for work, my wife says, honey, don't forget the tree. I said, oh, don't worry about that tree. You got a lot of time. We got three or four days. <laughs> so I went to work. And once you know it, I had car trouble that night. And I was late in getting home. And when I entered the house, my wife says, honey, did you get the tree? I said, well, no, I had a little car trouble. And, uh, but that's all right, we got two more days. <laughs> so on Tuesday morning, as I was leaving for work, my wife didn't say, honey, you'll notice she forgot that word. <laughs> she said, don't forget the tree. I said, don't worry, everything's under, under control. I went to work. And that day it snowed. It snowed so hard I had trouble getting home. And when I did get home, my wife said, Did you get the tree? I said, No, not today. Too much snow. I had trouble getting home. So on the next day was Wednesday. Time was running out. So I looked for work. Again, she said, don't forget the tree. But you know, that word, honey, was missing. <laughs> I went to work that day. I passed the lot where the trees were. And I noticed that there was not so many as there were at one time. And they were getting kind of few. That night, that was Wednesday night, someone at work had car trouble. So I volunteered to take him home, which I did. And I forgot all about the tree, except when I got home. <laughs> that was another turn. Where's the tree? Well, I said, I have hauled around, and I did. I said, well, tomorrow is the, the big day. That's the day of the Christmas party. So we'll leave early. Now we'll stop on the way and get the tree. So, okay. That was it. The little boys in the back row says, hey, where's that tree? 
I don't know. I said, uh, wait till the bar. So it's a Thursday morning. I went to work. So that was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday. Okay, I got back early from work. I said, let's go. We have to leave early tonight. Because I had to get the train before the party. So we all got the train, the car, the way we went. And I found the, the lot where the trees were. But then something was funny about that tree, about that lot. There was no lights on. Nobody was working. I said, oh boy. Now what? So I got, a car, I got out of the car, got the flashlight, and looked around, and all the trees were gone. Get to the far corner, I find a little tree. <laughs> About three feet tall. I had this. It was all, all the shape. All the shape. <laughs> I said, don't want you to get sold. Sold? <laughs> you know you're in bad shape. <laughs> Nobody wants you to decorate their house. So I said, I thought to myself, well, I will pick that tree up and we'll take it to the party. And uh, it's better than nothing. <laughs> so I reached down and grabbed that tree, and I pulled. But that tree was frozen to the ground. <laughs> I couldn't move it. I said, that's why I said, little tree, no one need to get sold. You're just a runt. Nobody will want you in the house. Look at that. You don't have any lamp, no branches, no trees, no leaves or anything. I said, aren't you ashamed of yourself? <laughs> <laughs> so, I was very critical. <laughs> and then I was, I turned and became sympathetic. I said, no wonder you, all your brothers and sisters got sold except you. But you can look up at the sky Right, you see the stars and the moon. And tomorrow, the sunshine will shine. You'll be all ready to grow a little bit more. I said, maybe next year I'll go to the wood and people will like to buy you. And I thought to myself, good luck, tree. <laughs> <laughs> but then it came to me a a poem written some time ago. It goes like this. Poems are made by fools like me. But only God can make a tree. 